I recently gave a keynote speech about vintage shopping. There's a whole new wave of new ways to buy vintage clothes, which is a bit of a fancy way of saying secondhand. What I discovered from my speech is that many midlife women are slightly afraid of vintage shopping because how can you stay elegant and relevant when you're buying old things? So stay tuned to the end where I'm going to give you some bonus tips about how to wear your vintage pieces at midlife and beyond without looking frumpy or old fashioned. I'm Alexandra Alenska, and I've worked as a creative director and stylist for luxury brands, including Chanel Celine and Vanessa Bruno, as well as magazines, including Vogue and Harper's Bazaar. And I've been featured in international press, including Forbes, Elle, The Sunday Times and The Independent. I now help directors and leaders in midlife and beyond to rebalance that work, 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 busy, busy, busy lifestyle you've become accustomed to, because you know life's too short to stay in that career-driven comfort zone. I help you to redesign and restyle your life, especially at midlife with life-changing transitions such as the breakup of relationship, divorce, menopause, or turning 40 and beyond. From your home and your wardrobe to your mind and social life, I help you with your stylish next chapter to step into your best life because I know you're ready to rock life again. The last thing any of us wants to do at midlife is to wear things that look outdated or old fashioned. And I know that that's the fear of secondhand shopping. In some cultures, there's also a stigma attached to secondhand clothes or vintage clothes as they're now known. It's rooted in the idea that you buy vintage only because you can't afford to buy new clothes. However, that's of course not the case. And we're seeing loads of celebrities re-wearing their clothes. Ariana Huffington, formerly of the Huffington Post, now of Thrive Global, also advocates re-wearing clothes. We also see Kate Middleton, the Princess of Cambridge, of course, Prince William's wife, re-wearing garments again and again. So our perception of re-wearing clothes and secondhand clothes is really altering these days. High-end vintage luxury is becoming a boom economy and we're seeing loads of new sites, including one from stylist Claire Richardson, um, where they're selling really exclusive pieces. There are also loads of stores such as Celia Knightsbridge, one of my personal favorites, which has a store in Knightsbridge in London and also in Monaco, where they have verified pieces. They're a very small team and they really know their luxury products. So you can be sure you're buying real products and not fakes because nobody wants to look fake at midlife or any time in their life, right? You want to be sure that you're buying quality investment pieces that are gonna be seeing you through this phase in your life. Of course, there's also the new resale sites such as Vestia Collective or The Real Real. Vestia Collective has been part bought by the LVMH group. So it's going to be interesting to see how this develops. And even luxury brands today are starting to actually buy back their archive and even start to resell them. So the vintage market and the perception of the vintage market is definitely changing. In Paris, you'll even find that some vintage stores are actually more expensive or the same price as going and buying new. There's even one vintage store in Paris that shall remain nameless for the purposes of this video, but it's really quite expensive. They justify this by saying that the pieces that they have are one-off pieces, you know, that you really can't get anymore. Whereas if you're buying new season, anybody can go into the store and buy one of those pieces, even if they're released on limited edition. So really the perception of secondhand and vintage is, is really changing. Personally, I prefer to work with vendors whom I've worked with for a long time and who I know and trust. That way, if there is any problem, I can go back to them because I've built up that relationship over the years. It also means that they save secret pieces, especially for me and my clients. The problem with buying on the big websites is that the verification process perhaps isn't as thorough as if you're buying from a source that you already know and have that relationship with. Also, I find buying online is fantastic if you're somewhere where you don't have access or immediate access to secondhand stores, but it comes with its own set of problems, namely not being able to try pieces on. So personally, I prefer going into secondhand stores and seeing what treasures they might have. It's a bit like a candy store for adults, right? Don't forget that the essence of French style is really to build your wardrobe slowly and with intention. So secondhand shopping can be a great place to do that. Nobody will know whether you've had your jacket for years or whether you've just put it into your wardrobe. It can be your secret. Here's my three top tips for secondhand shopping at midlife and beyond. Number one, first of all, go in with intention. 
you have to find this wonderful balance when you're secondhand shopping and go especially going into the stores between knowing that you might not find anything and looking out for something that's going to suit you. So the first step is always to have your personal style identity nailed and to know the positives about your body because it's all about highlighting the positives and hiding the negatives, right? Remember the power of the horizontal line. You do not put a horizontal line at your widest point or parts that you don't like, say the tops of your arms. So bearing in mind these simple guidelines, go into a secondhand store and try things on. You should have fun with it. If you know your body shape and you know what suits you, you'll be able to highlight the positives. Then it doesn't matter whether something's from the 70s, the 80s, the 90s or the 2000s. It's going to look good on you and that way you can build your wardrobe in that very French way where you're bringing pieces intentionally into your wardrobe that you're going to have for years to come. Of course, if you do find something that you fall in love with, um, but it's slightly too big for you, or say the shoulders um, have got some shoulder pads in, many of these things can be altered. So don't be afraid of having a good alteration service and changing things. This is a vintage blouse that I bought from uh, a vintage store in Canada, actually, in Montreal. And I had it altered, I had it taken up um, so that it was a more cropped style that suits my body shape better because I like to show off my, my slightly smaller waist. It's one of my positive attributes. So don't be afraid of getting things altered, but remember it's always easier to take things in than it is to make things bigger. If it's too small, just leave it. Um, don't think that you're going to diet into it. Shoulder pads can be taken out, darts can be put in. Um, and it's the same, of course, if you're in a store and you do find something that's slightly too large for you. There's a lot that can be done by a good alteration service or tailor. So that brings us to tip two, which is don't be afraid to get things altered, but make sure that you do it straight away. If you don't do it straight away, the risk is, of course, that you've bought something and then it's just going to sit in your wardrobe because you've not changed it, you've not had it altered, and then you're going to get that sort of buyer's remorse or guilt setting in. We don't want any more guilt in our lives, do we? It might seem sacrilegious to alter designer goods, and it does affect the resale value, but if you're buying with intentionality, hopefully you're going to have these things for years to come. And also don't forget that with accessories especially, there are services now available such as Restory or Restory, I'm not sure how to pronounce it, here in London, where they actually mend secondhand goods, things like bags or shoes. It's incredible what they can do. They can virtually remake a shoe, it feels like. So if you've got your favorite shoes or some shoes that you've bought secondhand that need a bit of tweaking, um, they can really work magic. So although it might initially seem sacrilegious to alter designer goods, I like to consider it a way of making my pieces bespoke for me so that they're really going to suit me at this time in my life and for years to come. And tip three, if you're not sure, just leave it. You know, sometimes you're just not going to find anything in the store and that's okay. Try and enjoy the experience. There's so many beautiful things in the world and part of vintage shopping is the hunt, right? And knowing that you might not find anything. Try and enjoy the experience of trying things on that you wouldn't necessarily try otherwise, right? It's a, it's a good experimentation ground. We're not going to find something every time. Sometimes it's just not meant to be. There's nothing worse than buying something that feels slightly too small or that you're not 100% sure about and again just to have it languishing in your closet. Finally, it can be easy to be overwhelmed when you go into a secondhand store. You know, there's so many options in there and you don't know what's going to um, feel right for you at this moment. So you have to go and be quite instinctive about it. What are you drawn to and why? Again, if you've done some of my exercises previously to establish your style identity and really what suits you at this time in your life, that's really going to help you. Uh, to start with. And if in doubt, stick to vintage accessories. You can really find some beautiful, unique things that nobody else has. Also, in terms of wearing your secondhand pieces, my advice would be to mix it up with modern pieces. Here, for example, I'm wearing this vintage blouse just with some standard jeans from Mother um, and a little, a little belt, <laughs> complete with my gold nails. So really mix it up, twist it, because if you wear only vintage things together, um, it can risk looking a little bit costumey. 
I, I think the same advice is true of wearing Chanel jackets, for example. You know, a Chanel jacket, whatever the era, is a classic buy. It can look a bit dated if it's got two big shoulder pads. Again, as I said, shoulder pads can be taken out, but you can just refresh them um, and make them look less frumpy. You know, if you're wearing tweed and tweed or a Chanel jacket with a little black dress, it can look a little bit dated. So just mix it up with some denim, some more casual pieces, a t-shirt underneath, for example. I've got a wonderful Thierry Mugler jacket I'll show you. And it's it's incredible. You know, Thierry Mugler just died. Um, and whenever a designer like this dies, an iconic designer, Mugler, of course, was very famous for his cuts, his very body conscious cuts, incredible, especially from the 1980s. And whenever somebody like this dies, the pieces become more desirable and probably are going to become trending again in, um, in terms of contemporary fashion. So that's also something to think about, you know, your classic pieces and then things that are gonna be a bit more trend pieces. I personally love Mugler because they show off the waist, but that's not always very fashionable, but we know that, you know, I like to show off my waist. So Mugler is a good brand for me, but if I wore the Mugler jacket with the skirt that it's supposed to be with, um, it was a suit originally, that would feel a little bit dated. It doesn't feel so fresh because that's how it would have been worn in the 1980s. So instead I prefer to wear the Mugler jacket either with a turtleneck underneath or a little bit sexy cleavagey, just with, again, some jeans or some more fitted wide leg trousers that are like my go-to everyday trousers. <laughs> 